developing the new molecule, uh, whether it is to development of the new molecule or uh, the ongoing marketing related decisions, uh, how to expand the new markets, uh, how to expand the new molecules, uh, how to face the challenges if your drug sales are going down in any specific region or your world uh, sales are uh, constantly going down worldwide. What are the challenges? How these issues are handled by the companies these days? Even the decisions on bringing down the costs today, whether it's the cost of logistics uh, and marketing costs. Today, the companies use, the pharmaceutical companies are using the business analytics tools or the power of business analytics uh, to take these decisions and decision processes become very robust and very scientific. So this career will give you a very, very sort of a solid head start if you take up a career in the business analytics domain today. So the next several years are going to be extremely interesting and the growth is substantial. Uh, at Clinimines, uh, we were established in the year 2004 and since then we have been only focused on the areas of pharmaceutical health and life sciences domain so we offer the specialized uh, uh, training programs for the students who are from the life sciences pharma health sciences domain and help them in building their careers in this particular industry i would uh, take my second part of the presentation after uh, our two eminent speakers, uh, uh, when they when they complete their uh, sessions, um, I would like to introduce you to two eminent speakers, Mr. Dinesh Pandey, and some of you are already familiar with uh, the Mr. Pandey. He has been the alumni of IHMR, uh, and we also have Mr. Sunil Singh, who is again both are eminent in their uh, business analytics domain and have build a beautiful career out of this particular industry so without wasting more time i would uh, like to invite uh, uh, mr dinesh pandey uh, today to share his experiences in terms of how the uh, how pharmaceutical business analytics is being used by the pharma companies in in making uh, business decisions. So I will shortly hand over the uh, session to Mr. Pandey. Just, I'll just take a minute. Sure, sure. Also, uh, thanks all. Thanks everyone for joining this uh, web webcast. Uh, and uh, Thank you for uh, coming for the good words set for me. Uh, so, just introducing myself, I'm Dinesh. Uh, having 14 plus years of experience, uh, I've done B-Farm by training and then my MBA pharmaceutical management from Ajmer Jaipur. But I have been into sales and marketing on companies like Cipla and Lupin. And post that, I have uh, worked in companies like IMS, Indigene, Data Monitor. And uh, six years back, when there was an inception of a company, Pharma is, uh, I started my uh, journey with Pharma is not six years. So when this company started, we were very less people. Now uh, we have around 250 people in India, uh, Pune and US. So it has been a great journey for me uh, till now. Uh, uh, that's why I'm saying that this uh, industry uh, in the last 15 years has got an exponential growth. And in the future also, uh, uh, this industry is going to uh, uh, expand and uh, do well. Uh, so right now everyone is thinking about what's going on, like uh, COVID cases. Uh, uh, the situation is worse. People not not working. But this is the only industry. If you even not IT, this is the only industry, one of the industries which, which is working from home, right? Because we need logistics, but we support really for the strategic decisions for the clients. We work them very closely with them. Uh, so that's why we can work from home, uh, doing their projects, helping them in strategic things. Uh, so we are working from home. And you will not uh, believe like uh, they, this is the internship time for the people who are in the first year MBA, maybe who are from IMS, Goa Institute of Management, Aichmar, 
uh, Delhi, uh, Jaipur, uh, lots of colleges. This is the time of internship. So most of the inter industries have postponed the, their internship or not doing that because uh, the logistic is the problem. They cannot go, they cannot meet people. But uh, our industry has started the internship for the students right now. Uh, they all are working from home on the live product. Even my company have uh, four interns started from was first April and the uh, 15th, some interns will join for, from work from home. So as I'm telling this industry is great, but still I found there is a huge gap uh, between the students, uh, what they are learning in the colleges and what we want from the students as an industry perspective. And I'm not saying that we want a fully trained person as an industry perspective, but still, I need people who have uh, some information or basic information about this analytic industry, uh, which includes forecasting, sales force analysis, uh, maybe competitive intelligence, pricing and market access, that is health economics and outcome research. Uh, so there is a gap uh, between the academy uh, and the industry, which I have seen in the last 13, 14 years. Uh, and the situation was even worse for uh, 13 years back, but still now there is a gap. Uh, and that's why when the people come from the uh, MBA colleges, uh, we give them a lot of training, two months training. Every company gives, I'm not saying every company gives two months training on job trainings, but still uh, there is a huge gap. So me and Kamal uh, uh, and Sunil, and different trainers will join uh, the courses also. So we are trying to fulfill those gaps by bringing this course that is the pharmaceutical business analytics and consulting. I'm not saying not saying course this course as a pharmaceutical business analytics i'm saying this about this course uh, that is the pharmaceutical analytics and business consulting because we are aiming uh, to join companies like July, mckenzie bcg all are doing the same type of work consulting and this is the unique type of course and the first time in india someone is going to start this course only dedicated to healthcare that is the pharmaceutical and the healthcare payers perspective uh, providers perspective everything uh, so uh, a huge growth is in the, uh, this in this area uh, and for next 10 20 years 30 years this is uh, uh, this is industry is going to evolve even in recession people are talking about the recession uh, it's going to come after this corona thing goes but in the last 2007 when the recession came i was in the industry i was a new joiner at that time uh, so on 2006 i joined this industry this was the industry which was not hit by the recession. This was the only industry which was not hit by the recession. We never thought of the recession. We had so much of work because after this Corona goes, our US healthcare industry, the Europe healthcare industry uh, is going to uh, work in the double phase. And if they work in the double, double phase, they need support. Uh, who is going to give support? B from India, Asia Pack is going to give support in terms of uh, analytics things uh, and the consulting side because we have a huge talent pool uh, pr coming from different prestigious colleges in India and even the people who are working in different domains like sales, marketing, lecturers uh, or in clinical trials and the, this uh, industry is very open for them because they have some bit of knowledge experience uh, into uh, this industry. So again, uh, thanks all uh, for joining the session and uh, uh, once Sunil introduces himself, I'll go through some slides uh, about the what this industry needs, what is the career path in this industry, uh, 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 how this in industry has evolved, what is the future of this industry, uh, lots of things uh, uh, will be told. And uh, so uh, basically, uh, me and Kamal was discussing for this one year about the huge gap, what is being in the industry. So uh, we are trying to fulfill these gaps and help academia uh, to get that. Uh, and everything comes with the cost. So of course, a course will be have cost, but th that will be a very uh, reasonable thing we are going to put because really we are trying to uh, uh, narrow the gap between the industry and the colleges. That that's why we are doing are going to do so. Uh, Sunil, I'll, I'll, I'll hand on to Sunil uh, he, uh, if he can introduce himself and how you use, how you, he is using this industry in terms of pharmaceutical. Uh, I'm from, I'm a person from the analytics domain. Uh, Kamal is from the training domain and he has into CROs. And, but Sunil is using our tools and techniques into Indian pharmaceutical industry. And I'll tell you, don't think that uh, in this industry you do a job for a consulting company like BCG, McKinsey, Pharma is Deloitte. No. In the next 10 years, 
each and every pharmaceutical company in India will be having this department. This has came to Asia Park now in the next 10 years, going to be a huge journey and every company in Indian pharmaceutical company is going to have these departments, competitive intelligence department, forecasting department, because without these things, the industry cannot be grow. These things, these tools, techniques of analytics are needed to take strategic and wise decisions, which will help the company, the industry to drive through. So these were the initial points from me. Uh, so Neil, you can take out from here. Uh, can you introduce okay. yourself, put some points from here? Uh, and then I'll join back uh, with some of my slides and uh, uh, the things, and I can put more light to the students on all the participants in the in, in, the, in, in this okay. class. Thanks. Thanks. Sure. Uh, so, hello everybody. Uh, I am Sunil Singh. Uh, I have joined here as a, one of the faculties of this course. And uh, I'll briefly introduce myself. Uh, as a professional, I have 13 years of experience in this industry. Uh, I, in these 13 years, I have worked for companies like Bristol Myers Squibb. I have worked for Heron. I have worked for Data Monitor. Uh, I have worked for Snipes, Life Sciences Consulting. Uh, then I have worked for uh, GSK. Uh, and I have worked for Data Consultancy Services. And now I am with one of the, the prominent manufacturing solutions uh, company in the industry, which is called uh, ACG. I am in their corporate uh, strategy department. Uh, and you know, I, I advise uh, along with my team on the four businesses of ACG on various uh, you know strategic growth opportunities, right from uh, go-to-market strategy, strategy planning, competitive intelligence, market intelligence, uh, customer analytics, uh, you know CRM, uh, pricing analytics. So, so my overall overall experience, if I have to sum it up. Uh, it's in uh, it's in life sciences consulting. I have a good domain understanding of health economics and outcomes research, pricing, reimbursement, market access. Uh, then uh, for, uh, I also have uh, had a stint in marketing, and now I'm in strategy. Uh, my overall, uh, as far as my educational background is concerned, I have a bachelor's degree in pharmacy from Dipsa. And I have, I have done my executive MBA in healthcare administration from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi. So, as Kamal and Dinesh, you know, briefly introduced the purpose of this course, you know, uh, the overall intent or the vision of this course is to act as a bridge uh, between, the, between the between the college and the industry. So, as you are aware, you know. So I'm, I understand that most of you guys are either, you know, in doing your pursuing your master's degree in pharmacy, or uh, uh, yeah, the you know MBA in healthcare, or you know, MBA in pharmaceutical management. I'm not sure if bachelor bachelors in pharmacy students uh, have joined this or not. But even if they are jo they are joined, it's very relevant for them as as well. Uh, so the vision is to you know have a bridge course so that you know students when they appear for interviews when they prepare their cover letters when they interact with the industries so that you know they are familiar with the concepts that are the concepts and tools that you know we use day to day when we do our jobs as you know you know, to make informed decisions, whether it's any pharma company, consulting company, KPO, you need people with skills that are the ground running. That's why when you see the student, uh, you know, companies, uh, when they come for placements, recruitments, they always hire students who have something extra to offer. And this is what we intend to add to your resume if you attend this course, that you will have something extra. For the in the uh, for your recruiters uh, in your resume, so that so that you know when the recruiters interview you, 
saying that you know when the tutors come to interview and you 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 while interviewing you showcase your knowledge you know which is industry agnostic for example when you are familiar with some competitive intelligence when you are familiar with simple concepts of marketing when you are uh, familiar with simple concepts of problem solving uh, or when you are familiar with uh, clinical trials you know us fda how to get extract data how to make sense of data then you know that separates you from the herd so that's that's the overall intent that while you are pursuing your academics and you are building your uh, subject knowledge about the core you know chem whether it's chemistry whether it's uh, you know, mathematics finance or you know uh, all the medicinal chemistry and everything that you need there is there is something that's additional required from that and that is what we want to offer to you and that is the overall intent of this course so i'll ask dinesh and kamal to join again and take you through the presentation that we have prepared sure sure so i'll uh, share my screen give me a second Uh, so uh, sunil can you see the presentation yeah okay so uh, i think uh, everyone is able to see that so i was telling this uh, when i was started earlier uh, as per uh, the different uh, companies are reporting how this business is going to grow but uh, if you see the healthcare business analytics is going to grow hugely uh, it was around 14 billion dollars business and globe in 2019 and it is going to be around 50 billion in 2025 so if you see in the uh, next 4 or 5 years uh, uh, it is going to triple right uh, and the growth rate will be 28.3% uh and this uh, this major of this growth will be uh, driven from uh, indian companies uh, indian analytic companies because a uh, lots of companies are there in asia back in india like deloitte mckinsey pwc pharma is equia the uh, decision resource uh, this is the uh, thing which is going to uh, get through the vendors and second thing which will happen uh, in this industry Uh, right now you some of the some of you will be aware that uh, different pharmaceutical companies have set up in india their offices in terms of analytic center like if you see novartis has a office in hyderabad uh, around 3000 people supporting novartis uh, global that is the switzerland office and the us office in terms of providing this business analytics marketing analytics support to their different brand teams medical affairs team health economic outcomes research team competitive intelligence team forecasting team so novartis has a office in uh, hyderabad even lily has a office uh, in bangalore right uh, and abbott has a office in bangalore and even no notice has a office in bangalore merck msd that is a merck has a office in pune so currently around 7 to 8 big pharmaceutical companies have offices uh, in india to support their analytics and consulting quality uh, but in the coming years majority of the pharmaceutical companies worldwide top 50 from us will have offices in india and uh, and they will be supporting to their global office so from where they have to get the people so people are you me because this is very small industry right now so people from each company further will be churning but there is a huge scope 
in the next 10 years when these companies come in India and set up their offices and also the companies like us support uh, their support increases in future so we need people we need trained professional people because the day you come we are trying to put you on the live project only so we need some kind of people who have some kind of information some kind of basic things they, uh, they have learned and this is missing in our syllabus i have been trying to solve this but maybe due to uh, some constraints uh, they cannot include these things in the module and the, the even they can include also i'm telling you but they will not get the trainers because uh, we be, we the we people in this industry are quite busy we are 24 by 7 involved in our projects because we have to support in the overlap time also in the us and the europe so we don't have a time uh, to do a visiting faculty kind of thing in a fixed we can do but we cannot do in a fixed time like a seven we seven day module or something like that we cannot take uh, uh, we cannot take time out from our uh, busy schedule on the weekdays so this can be a challenge for different colleges they cannot they are not putting these courses that's why we are trying to come up with some this unique course which students can enroll and on weekends only because weekends the students are also free and the, uh, we are saying trying to say from our end right uh, we the trainers uh, from this really who have worked 10 12 years in this in, the, in this industry in this industry uh, they can help you in getting a uh, real important points so you can see my next slide uh, if you see business analytics business is going to grow around 76 billion and majority of this is going to be driven by healthcare analytics or the pharmaceutical business analytics because you know in the us and europe there has been huge healthcare cost like if you see this this situation after corona what will happen every country uh, has to go through economic spell down so cost cutting will be there so these uh, healthcare companies what will try to do they will cut the cost and how the cost, uh, cost is cut for a major healthcare company or pharmaceutical company if they uh, uh, outsource some projects some work to asia pack thing it's not like that we are cheap or we are uh, very cheap to do work for them they don't have resources the only thing they uh, feel gap is the resources which india has completely we have lots of uh, physicians in india lots of dentists in india doing mbas uh, we have lots of pharmacists e farm m farm microbiologists biotechnologists we have a huge talent pool to support this industry right this industry is a completely a knowledge based industry a people oriented industry still lots of people are thinking that python is there r is there so there are lots of tools in this industry but this industry is based on drugs the key people here are doctors patients and the drugs this cannot be driven by artificial intelligence or machine learning machine learning artificial intelligence can be a part of this industry but still human intelligence our brain our capability of thinking strategically is going to drive this industry that's the point some people think that when the artificial intelligence or machine learning will come this industry is going to be cool. no 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 the human intelligence thing the is cannot be surpassed by a machine learning oh, oh, suppose today i am extracting a data that machine learning can help me and that extracting that data but after extracting that data that machine learning or artificial intelligence cannot think that what to have to be done with that, that data a competitive intelligence person or health economic person will see that data and then he will give insights what has to be what insights are coming from this data so there is a huge opportunity for the people who are being who are studying like bds m form in this industry still if you see and open any of the portal you can see in this uh, situation companies like novartis pharma is equia drz all have openings for their people so nothing going to stop only thing is that you people have to take an extra step learn about this uh, uh, basics of business analytics and consulting in terms of pharma domain and uh, 
to uh, have to be ahead of other people at the time of recruitment. And second thing, this slide you can see why you should join this industry, right? So this industry uh, is very lucrative. You join here as a trainee analyst. If someone is experienced, uh, he's a BDS professional having experience, he can join at this stage. When, uh, after one to six years, how you grow from a trainee analyst, you grow analyst, you grow consultant, you become a project manager, a key account manager, you become an engagement manager, you become a team lead, and you become a practice head. Practice head means like you become a head of a practice, like forecasting is a practice, competitive intelligence is a separate practice, Salesforce analytics is a practice. If you think you have to be in India, you can grow um, in this hierarchy from a trainee analyst to practice it in uh, 10 to 12 years, you can go to a practice at position. And these positions, in terms of remuneration, if, if I talk, I should not, I'm not saying about any industry in terms of remuneration or all, but this practice had. Um, Dinesh, Dinesh, sir, just a minute. Give me a moment, Dinesh, sir. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Santosh Yadav, please switch off your phone. Oh. Please mute it. If you don't want to participate, you can leave because it's causing disturbance to others. Mr. Yadav, Santosh Yadav. Oh. Yeah, the next, sir, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was saying uh, regarding the career path, uh, how a trainee and list can uh, go to a team lead level and the practice at level, and there is a huge remuneration. The, this remuneration is cannot cannot be achieved in the, even in pharmaceutical marketing. A GM uh, runs around this, and he has a huge pressure. So I was saying that this industry is immense amount of opportunity uh, to be here. And second path is there. Once you become consultant or analyst and you don't want to become a leader in India, there is a second option in this industry. Uh, you go long term for US, uh, maybe for four years, five years, your H1B applications is being done, your B1 is being done, different visa policies has been done. And you go there in US and sit in pharmaceutical companies, clients office beside the client and helping them in the analytics works, maybe competitive intelligence forecasting or anything. So there you are an individual contributor, but the uh, average uh, remuneration you get there is around 76, 70 to $80,000 per year, which is a huge money. So uh, this industry as a overall is very lucrative. If in, 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 you are in India, it's a huge 15, 20 years, you can reach a level what you Thing today uh, after doing MBA, MCOM, and things. And if you want to choose a career path as an individual contributor, of course, you can move to uh, uh, US, Europe uh, from the consulting company side, work there with the clients and contribute in their work. So there is a huge amount of exposure in terms of learning of, uh, with the US people and uh, European people because they are really the strategic thinker because in their pharmaceutical industry, uh, they really, they, they do a lot of R&D work. So they are really strategic thinker. So in terms of, with respect to money, you have an immense amount of exposure to learn from uh, these people and uh, grow in the career path. So some of the highlights about this course will be, uh, 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 this course will, uh, we give you a certification from Clinic Minds and a testimonial from the uh, trainers too. This is this this is something unique you will get uh, when you will get the certificate from the Clinic Minds. So you will get a testimonial from the trainers. And uh, today only I am there and Sunil is there. Uh, but we have a long list of trainers from the industry uh, having around eight years to fourteen years of experience. Uh, from the industry and the comp uh, some big companies. I cannot name the companies right now, but we have a huge list of trainers which will be involved in these programs. And the reason is that they, these trainers are the leaders in, this comp uh, in different companies. And we are trying to uh, find people and we are struggling into that. So really we want help you guys to get knowledge, basic things, and be prepared for the, this industry. Currently we are not getting people. I have done such, so many of campuses in this year, I, uh, be, be, I was involved in IAMS campus, then GIM campus, Aishmar campus, Delhi campus, Jaipur campus, even uh, Jamia Hamdard, 
Manipal. Then around 25 colleges we did there. But we were not able, when we asked these questions about competitive intelligence, forecasting, people cannot answer these questions. They only uh, think that analytics is about machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence and the Python. It's not about that. There are 99%, there are other things. These Python are, uh, are only to, they are just simple tools to help the analytics, right? But the real part is the domain thing which goes into different modules of this uh, uh, this consulting site. So, so this will be a complete online course uh, on weekend. Only the market relevant course. If this is a market relevant course. What what work this industry is doing? This will be taught to you. There will be live sessions and recording. Uh, simple and easy to un understand language. Uh, you can access the course content. Uh, lots of case studies will be there. Even. On weekends, uh, tool, you can be attached to different mentors, uh, the people who are participating in this training program. You can be attached, you can ask these questions uh, on a uh, different platform. You can ping them, they will answer that because we are, really we are here uh, uh, not to sell anything, just to bridge the gap between the academy and the industry. We are finding this gap and we are Seeing that even less people are there, and we are struggling to get people, so we want more people to drive my industry, my company, and for that I need people. And uh, after doing these courses, whenever are you free, uh, you can do some uh, internship or live projects with the directly with the companies. I can help uh, doing some projects with my company, that is the Farmers. Uh, I, I have not written the name of different companies here. Uh, but we have a, a tie-up with uh, 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 some, not a tie-up. Uh, we, we will be uh, collaborating with different farmer, uh, the consulting companies, which will give you some live projects and internship, and the uh, live things you can learn there. Uh, so, uh, and definitely, and here we are not saying that uh, uh, this uh, uh, we will assist you in placement. No, this course is going to this course is we is you are being brand ambassador to get the placement. I'm very sure we are not going to uh, uh, help you in uh, uh, sending your resumes. When you will find an opening and you will apply in different consulting companies or like no artists or any company. And if you have relevant information about these courses, what has been taught, definitely you will be uh, out of the box thinker and you, you will be selected uh, if you have gone through. Uh, we, uh, so this course itself is a brand ambassador for you, uh, for us uh, to get you placed, get you knowledge, and get you part of this uh, huge industry which, which is going to come in future. So here are some uh, modules what we were thinking about. Uh, it will be an introduction to different healthcare system, US and EU regulatory environments. Now these two courses, anyone can say that what is different we are going to teach. These courses we can find on Google. Uh, yeah, of course you can go, you can learn about the healthcare delivery system in US, but how that healthcare delivery system can be used, uh, what type of projects are coming into these types of healthcare delivery system, how it becomes a base for all the other verticals, you cannot get there. You can learn about the healthcare delivery system, but how it can be used, how it can be implicated in our industry, uh, it's very difficult uh, to get from there. So it will be a regulatory environment system. It, it will be a competitive intelligence thing. We will be giving you a module on intellectual property rights. Yeah, uh, market assessment, pricing and reimbursement, data set, basing and raw sales for analytics. Uh, and we will be giving this module. And as a clinic mind, we have a complete uh, place, placement assist assistance thing. We have complete setup. Uh, we will help you in mock interviews, making your CVs, uh, sending to different companies. So, uh, Mr. Kamal and the Clinic Man has a complete uh, system which helps people to get prepared once they uh, complete this course, get prepared for the courses, and the they are ready for the industry. So, this is a structure uh, like. Different healthcare system will be there. Three three day courses, nine hours, two assignments, two case studies. So this is the structure we have made. Uh, so and if you see on the left side, these are the different practices which has been driven. Uh, so if you want, you can what you can do, you can go 
to websites of any of the company like pharma pharma is equia or uh, you can go to drg and you can see when you will uh, go to their website drop down what they do they do all these things right they do competitive intelligence they do market assessment they do pricing and assessment data sets so you can get the knowledge here in the courses and from the day one you can be part of their live projects and of course you will be a different to get into those jobs when you go through these courses so this is the current structure of this course but uh, how many people join and what will the batch size uh, we have to define so these hours and can uh, go here and there but this will be the structure and it will be the weekend uh, thing type right and trainers profile will be it from all the trainers will be from indian pharmaceutical industry consulting and analytics and trainers will be uh, will be 8 to more than 8 years of experience really who are working in this industry uh, right so uh, so these was the some uh, basic things about the courses and uh, i'll uh, start with a couple of slides as a demo session for the competitive intelligence uh, so this is the uh, competitive intelligence is a vertical which each pharmaceutical company in us has us europe uh, have uh, so this uh, function supports to the uh, different other functions in the company maybe the marketing sales sales force uh, the pricing and reimbursement so competitive intelligence is an integral function of uh, any pharmaceutical company every pharmaceutical company in us have a competitive intelligence director cdn manager managers and their work is to monitor what is happening in the markets what is happening with their brands what is what is going to happen in the future for their brands who what competitors are coming in the future what competitors are coming today and competitive intelligence is not a static process uh, it is a continuous process of monitoring the competitors uh in terms of everything maybe regulatory maybe pricing or maybe the uniqueness of the product so if you can see uh this is the product life cycle of any product so you can see uh, when i see when i say competitive intelligence it is a one word but inside that how much type of support can be provided uh to different uh, to pharmaceutical company if suppose a project product is in a pre clinical phase uh, we have to tell them what type of patient population you need for the uh, your trials what should be your key targets and uh, amoes you should should look for the clinical trials opportunity opportunity assessment suppose a company has i vindication which they think that they should go we will tell them from india um, no no you have to go with this indication because this indication have a huge patient pool you will get patients for the clinical trial clinical trial uh, 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 construction will be easy if the product is in clinical phase you can do a therapy areas you can do a competitive landscape kind of thing mergers and acquisition at the clinical trial mapping launch time estimation company profiling ppp analysis partner identification financial assessment of a product whenever it is in phase 1 and phase 2 because when a product is in phase 1 and phase 2 and it is going to be in phase 3 you need huge amount of money uh, to do the phase 3 trial so before you do a financial assessment that if this product will be launched in future what revenues it will give me because when you will know what revenues it will give you then only we'll go for phase 3 trials whether because you have to see what i am spending and what i'll get in the future so that comes into the forecasting thing so forecasting helps here a uh, launch strategy when it is a pre launch ci landscape reimbursement intelligence regulatory trialing so you can see n number of activities we are supporting uh, from as a competitive intelligence and same things uh, we support from india from the companies like ims and every vendor we support uh, to different pharmaceutical companies healthcare companies in us and europe but for these all process some companies have their offices in india i told you like novartis and novo nordis have their own offices in this kind of setting and supporting them but this types of verticals like ci is not in indian pharmaceuticals companies right now but as their growth is a little bit saturated because they are into generics but in the future next 10 years these types of functions is going to come in indian pharma companies ci function forecasting functions and these all the activities will be done in indian pharmaceutical companies for their products currently they are not doing this but in the future they have to do that 
because they have to grow in uh, with respect to competition and all um, only uh, increasing patient is not the thing they have to do these things because these things give lots of values uh, and helps in making strategic decisions of uh, those things so I'll, I'll i'll go through what is pipeline analysis uh, uh, one thing i'll discuss with you on the ci thing as it is a demo class it cannot be covered in 10 15 minutes but still uh, you can go to clinicaltrial.gov uh, there is a website and type any indication there you will get list of clinical trials happening in us so this that list is extracted from there uh, and here the game starts when you extract that list then you get the data so ci is not only data gathering data extraction it's not the ci is not getting the news ci is not getting the updates ci is ci is not gathering the it is giving the competitive intelligence right it giving the competitive intelligence to corporates it's a corporate intelligence it's the competitive intelligence it's a consulting once you get the data from clinical trials then the game starts you do lots of analysis into this and then you will tell your clients who is coming when who is coming when with what attribute who is coming when with what attributes and who will do how much revenues if someone comes in 2024 your product is gone means my product is gone so if someone is coming in 2024 how should i be prepared right now so that when someone comes in 2024 i am not being affected my market share doesn't go so for do that 2024 we have to be very predictive and doing predictive competitive intelligence predictive is a word which can be used like predictive forecasting predictive analysis so in same kind of thing we have a predictive competitive intelligence we do lots of data gathering and give the insights in making a, a very nice reports in terms of powerpoint maybe word or excel and giving to the clients and they present they present to their uh, different c level executive like chief executive officers and ceo and finance people which help them to drive the strategic decisions so there are some public websites where you can get the information then there are some private uh, databases which gives you all this information even if you see these three companies data model global data and adis insight they have their offices in india addison site has a office in uh, bang uh, the pune global data has office in hyderabad data monitors has office in hyderabad so immense uh, uh, opportunity for people like us to contribute in this industry evaluate has a office in noida so people from our domain like n form b form mba are working here and growing uh, with the industry growing with this companies other part uh, in five minutes i'll take what is threat analysis threat analysis i uh, suppose i have a, everyone has a threat right so even i have a shop in my uh, mohalla uh, in my community i have threat that if someone opens another shop in besides me what will happen to me what threat will happen to me so same kind of thing each and every product in pharmaceutical company or each company have a threat so this is one of the important thing being followed in competitive intelligence forecasting what threats i will be in the future or currently what i have and what how should i deal with those uh, threats so that uh, i am not affected uh, uh, i am not affected in these things uh, so everything comes from a reading different articles from pubmed jama understand company so that's why i was saying that artificial intelligence machine learning can help you to get this data but reading this articles pubmed and jama the which really uses intellectual things cannot be done by machine learning and artificial intelligence you have to read those things and come with the insight and then educate the client or the stakeholders and uh, tell them this is your thread this is what you have to do in this future this you don't have to so it comes with immense knowledge so that's why i don't sometimes i say this industry as a uh, consulting but majorly uh, me and kamal discuss we say this industry as a knowledge industry right knowledge you people have knowledge uh, we just give you a little bit of training and you use that knowledge and intellectual things to come up with insights and help healthcare partners healthcare companies in us europe canada australia india to 
drive their business to get more and more success by giving this points right so it was a, a brief a snapshot from me uh, so so kamal if you can give sunil a uh, 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 the presentation rights he can speak on something how this uh, cia uh, or the consulting thing uh, is happening in the indian pharma industry here 10 minutes he can explain and then we can come back to uh, with you uh, with the closing thing and uh, i think we can handle some questions also kamal right uh, 10 yes, questions maximum absolutely yeah we'll have a lot of time for questions Yeah. So Sunil, if uh, you can uh, write I something. I will give you the presenter. Uh, you can share your presentation. Yeah, Sunil, you can do ten uh, minutes. Then Kamal can uh, do the final things, and we can move to next thing. Thank you all. Sunil, we can see the slide. Okay so can you guys hear me full screen and Uh, can you? Yeah, we can see. Screen. So maybe you can make it to full screen, maybe, and your presentation, so that we can see more clearly. Or Sunil, so you can start speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, so friends. Uh, You know, as as Dinesh uh, uh, talked about, about uh, you know various uses of this course, how this can help you. I just also, also briefly introduce that, that uh, you know there are various functions in uh, pharma, pharma, inter, pharma companies, consulting companies, cable companies. You know these are structured as structured as you know uh, SAP teams, pricing teams, pricing teams, commercial analytics. Uh, health economics and outcomes research. Then there is forecasting, consulting, com competitive intelligence, market research. So these all require some hard skills, you know, that can be used to first of all gather data, then uh, draw insights, and then make them presentable. So that when the uh, leaders or your clients or your uh, bosses wants to drive insights or wants to know something that how you know this particular thread or particular opportunity helps them then you will have to do it through a structured way so there are various frameworks that are used in the industry and which are partly covered in the in your courses and and are not covered entirely plus the industry expertise that we bring so that makes it practical so instead of in in the colleges you know mostly people have uh, come with academic background so what what happens in the industry is something we know so that's something you know we will help you when we do with the all the case studies uh, will uh, help you navigate through the data drive insights so there are some key frameworks that are used i'll switch to second slide okay so whenever you see an industry you have to imagine its value chain yeah so for example for pharma industry the value chain is something right from r and d discovery to manufacturing then uh, market access and then launch okay so there are various steps or various functions involved while formulating a product and then launching it in the market so that's something which is very important and we will 
teach that framework of value chain analysis to you. Then there is a one of the uh, uh, you know uh, one of the techniques which was invented by a consultant uh, from uh, McKinsey. Uh, she had invented a framework called uh, Pyramid Principle, so which is about situation, complication, question analysis. So this is something that's not only used while uh, presenting data, visualizing your uh, insights, but it also helps a lot in communication. So while you are writing emails, while communicating with people, you know, you have to do it in a way that there is a story. So this is how this technique helps you in telling a story through a structured way. And this is something we can, you know, we will take you through in as part of this course. Uh, then there is a, another framework called issue tree or called messy uh, framework. It's called mutual exclusive and cumulatively exhaustive analysis. It's a problem solving uh, uh, technique, uh, you know, works like a decision tree. So we, where you can structure a problem into different parts and then go around solving it. So, so that's something we will teach you as a part of this course. Then you are all aware of Fortis framework. Something we will deliberate more on in this course. How and the live examples of it. And you know, for example, in the books that you see is theory. But how it's used in the industry is something we will tell you. Then Porter's five forces, you know, this is used uh, as an uh, to see the entry barriers in an industry. Uh, you know, if you have to enter industry, if you enter a product category, if you enter a market, what are various forces that affect that market and that can that can have an impact on your, you know, go to market strategy or entry strategy. Then uh, there is another uh, framework. And yeah, and that is, there is a, uh, another technique called internal factor evaluation and external factor evaluation. So of all what all forces externally affect the company, uh, you know, what are the macroeconomic environments? Uh, what are the opportunities? What could be the threats? And then there is strength and weakness, which are uh, part of a company, you know, which which companies have to navigate if they have to be successful in the market. So these we are various techniques, you know, that will equip yourself, that that will help yourself, equip yourself with the knowledge to first to see through the data and drive insights, and then inform management, your bosses, whoever you are working for, and this stands out in your resume when you when you understand these techniques practice these techniques this this uh, you know shows your recruiter that you know you come equipped with certain skills which they eventually teach you in when you go to uh, when you go and join these companies so if you are already prepared then that gives you a advantage what we call is a competitive advantage from other candidates who may or may not be familiar with the with these skills and this is something used across so you can use it in as you know you can use it in commercial analytics you can use it in in uh, health economics forecasting consulting it, these these are frameworks that are that, you know that are that have a wide reach so so th that's something also additional apart from uh, analytics that we will be teaching you in this course. And I think uh, Dinesh and Kamal have already emphasized a lot about uh, about how this course is going to differentiate to help you differentiate and how this will act as a bridge course between between your academic uh, knowledge and the industry and the skills that industry is looking for. So hope this helps. Uh, hand over to Dinesh and uh, Kamal. Thank so, you, Sunil. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dinesh, would you like to kind of uh, summarize the whole thing and then I will sort of uh, talk about yeah. the program structure. Great. So uh, I'll just uh, 
uh, summarize a couple of points for uh, this uh, uh, the course which we are trying to uh, 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 tell you guys uh, it's going to help you uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling the gaps between the academy and the industry first thing uh, it will help you to get uh, placed in big companies like uh, pharma is uh, deloitte mckinsey bcg equia all the healthcare uh, things third thing when the people comes from, uh, from the different colleges to us like uh, as a fresher uh, we uh, as a uh, industry we pay a lot of money to them uh, so uh, initially we try to train them but uh, on the basis of their their work they are just initially very at very initial phase uh, so this program will help you uh, before you come to the uh, different companies have a background of everything which will help you to learn faster and uh, perform uh, different with respect to other peers which are coming from different colleges to you and when you come you are have already taken a step ahead and you are ahead of the curve so uh, I like to conclude uh, with these points, and Mr. Kamal uh, can take from here. Uh, so again, I'll, last point I like to say: uh, we are here to help you. Uh, uh, of course, everything comes with a cost because logistics and everything goes. Uh, but we are there. We are here to help you uh, and uh, bridging the gap between the industry and the academia. That's all. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dinesh. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, now we would like to have one by one a question if anyone would like to speak now you can one by one unmute and sort of a that will be helpful and uh, please ask your question so that we'll be happy to uh, answer all your queries but take it one by one so that will be helpful Or you can write your question on the window, the chat window, and then I can sort of uh, 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 answer your query. Or you can speak as well if you like to. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Myself, Futej. Hi. Hi, sir. Uh, so I would like to know about the course details uh, and uh, fee structures. Let me know right. About it. So what we have done basically, we have the program presentation after the uh, this webinar ends. Uh, we will be uh, we have your email IDs with us, and uh, we will share the program structure and the, what is the fee structure. The the one thing I can share with you at this stage, due to the immense interest into this program, we are planning to launch the batch in the first week of. Um, first week of uh, May and this will sort of uh, be two weekend uh, weekend classes on Saturdays and Sundays the duration of the program would be uh, six months and at this stage we are offering 50 percent fee rebate because a lot of demand has come from the students due to the coronavirus you know the cost due to the cost pressures we have reduced the fee by 50 percent but that's for this batch only and shortly you will receive a mail with the fee structure and the program presentation uh, in the next couple of hours you will receive the emails uh, sir, i would like to ask you that uh, uh, yeah yeah one more thing, uh, once Kamal shares the fee structure and all these things, uh, if you have any doubt, you just, if any single doubt regarding anything, come back to Kamal with your questions. Don't stop it there. Uh, single so, doubt, uh, we are there to answer. Yep. Right, Dinesh. So I have some written questions. So everyone could, re could remain mute right now. I have a question from Mr. Amit Kumar Thakur. Uh, Amit is asking how this program is different from data science. So, I mean, uh, the primary difference between the data science. Now, data science is a very wide, it's a more IT sort of a related role. And you can apply data science in any industry. Say, for example, if you learn machine learning uh, or AI based, any other AI based sort of a program, or let's say you learn machine learning. Now, machine learning, you can apply for the business decision making in financial services, in telecoms, in any other retail sector. 
but the program which we are going to uh, you know train you on this is focused on taking the business decisions business analytics whether it's for clinical uh, taking a clinical molecule decision or making a marketing decisions or your costs are going up substantially logistics costs are going up you want to bring down your costs so there is a transportation model so all those kind of a uh, analytics you will study in this so so Great. this is you might learn in this program certain data science aspects uh, like python and all but this is more application oriented more management oriented Great. sort of a course another question from is uh, i have from I will just read out a question from Anjali Kapoor. Uh, it would be great if this session focused more over the business analytics rather than the course details, which is already in the brochure. Yes. So Anjali, we have, you know, tried to kept as much as uh, possible because uh, so that way we were able to explain the program also that what it contains. But yes, you know, uh, going forward, we will be uh before the commencement we will have one more session so we will be talking more about the industry as well akriti dube as i come from the bds background and i have no knowledge about the analytics so how will this help me in the bridge the gap yeah so this is the whole objective akriti then you are from a bds background you have certain amount of medical sort of a qualification in place you understand pharmacology now even if you don't know analytics that's fine this is where we are going to train you on analytics um, that how the pharmaceutical industry is using this what are the various techniques uh, what are the various solutions so you will be trained on all this so even yeah. if you don't have any knowledge that does not matter we will be able yeah. to address this and your yeah, biggest strength is yeah your biggest strength is that you are bds you come with a huge amount of medical knowledge and and the physicians are very much preferred in these types of uh, work and in pharma as we have around uh, 30 40 bds which are doing a great job uh, in their work yeah i have another question from chaya chaya is asking is this uh, course can be done after b farm or m farm uh, or during these courses. So Chaya, B Farm is fine. You can even do this program through B Farm. A lot of B Farm students are successfully built this career right. uh, after doing this uh, program. And if you are into the final years of B Farm or M Farm, you can do this course from a placement point of view. If you are looking for right. a job placement and you are into the final year of the program, do it we encourage that so by the time you complete your graduation and your results are out and uh, you'll be ready for the job right. next question i have from deepa uh, not, uh, yes uh, deepa we will be recording online we'll be sharing those sessions online as well you'll get a username password uh, another question, ma'am, what are the skill sets required to be in the pharmaceutical business analytics? What additional things we need to need to add the bridge the gap? Dinesh, uh, skill sets required in business analytics. Skill sets, uh, as I told you, all are uh, adult doing graduation, post graduation. So that is the skill sets you already have. And we are there to train uh, on your skill sets. Uh, so uh, we need just uh, this industry needs just common sense else everything is being taught by us or the company you join so uh, it's not specific skill set you should have to come just come with your brain your degree that's enough yep. and uh, in, in, in this you know the skill set the additional skill sets which you require i have been covered in the program brochure so those are the skill sets which uh, you would right. need I have another question from Shivesh. I'm a B farm buzzer. I'm pursuing post graduation diploma in packaging from an Institute of Packaging, and I'm in final semester. So I have two perspectives to work in both drug aspect and packaging aspect. How Glenimine's course could be helpful. Now, Shivesh, you are into the packaging side, which is itself is a very uh, specialized uh, sort of a domain uh, worldwide. There's a lot of emphasis. Today on to the packaging industry. 
uh, what from a clinimines point of view you could learn at clinimines business analytics is your choice because you're in packaging side so whether you would like to switch your career from packaging to analytics that's going to be your call but at clinimines i think what we can help you is to learn the entire drug development and marketing process because you would uh, for example there are a lot of specialized companies these days who are into the pharmaceutical logistics pharmaceutical packaging and who provide the end-to-end -end services to the clinical research industry so if you increase your knowledge about the clinical research industry you will be able to actually uh, work in the there are specialized companies uh, like bill care and all you must have heard as a packaging student uh, bill care and all to work in their clinical sort of a domain uh, i have a next question aditya singh uh, is there any course related to medical device business analytics uh, this program is fundamental about the business analytics uh, you will be able to apply this in terms of the medical devices as well. Dinesh, can you relate this to uh, medical devices, please? And yeah. So uh, uh, I'll give you example of some companies like Global Data, Transparency Market Research, Markets and Markets. Uh, these all are based out, out of Pune. Uh, and they are into consulting in, for medical devices, completely medical devices. Because medical device industry is still in a growing phase and it is a huge potential right now if you see the situations like this uh, testing kits have different testing kits have to come in the future and also there are completely uh, companies dedicated to the medical devices which are running from india which supports medtronic companies like medtronic roche diagnostic and everyone in their work from india so it's a huge opportunity the, uh, for the medical device consulting too thanks Dinesh. i have a next question how much is the from vishal bamboria Duration. So, uh, Vishal, the duration of this program is six months weekends. So, your classes will take place on Saturdays and Sundays through this kind of a mode today, the way we are uh, conducting okay. this session. Uh, I have a next question from Prashant Dinesh, which you may be able to, or Sunil may be able to answer. Uh, I'm Prashant, analyst, analyst in Cogentrix Consultants. Have an experience of two years. Will this course help me out in deep learning as basics I know very much? Uh, will this course sure. provide a knowledge of all these things specifically in CI and forecasting in details? Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's why our uh, program is for the people uh, who are into like, suppose someone is into a uh, small uh, KPO and they want to move out of like you so this we give a deep deep and detailed knowledge into competitive intelligence and forecasting definitely this program will help you to change your function and get uh, a good uh, opportunity in uh, forecasting or competitive intelligence uh, companies uh, a total business consulting company yeah uh, then, uh, sunil there is a question for you from bharti verma role of business analytics in consulting field can you elaborate okay. yeah sure can you hear me? Yes, yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you see consulting or analytics, while the these two come out as different fields, but there are you know they overlap in boundaries. So right. once you learn the techniques, they are applicable both in analytics as well as consulting. For example, storyboarding, problem solving, uh, issue trees, uh, you know, uh, external factor evaluations, and internal factor evaluations. These are applicable everywhere, and 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 you know there is there are overlapping boundary. Yeah. So you, it's not that if you are in consulting you won't uh, do analytics or or you won't uh, do uh, primary research or you won't do clinical trial mapping. It depends on projects, projects yeah. to projects. Various skills are required, and this is where these uh, various frameworks help you to think you throughout the project scope or the problem that you are trying to solve for and then present in it in a way that is you know appealing for the management right. and also while while you are doing that project or working on that project it will help you filter the noise you know what kind of data you should be going for uh, how to present it how to draw the insights that's what matters 
so thank you analytics irrespective of that yeah right. consulting thanks, is to man. consult and yeah analytics is the way to do like suppose a doctor consults you by doing different tests and all so this analytics is like doing different tests and prescribing medicine and consulting to the patient so uh, then, uh, yes, Jan from IHMR, Jaipur. Uh, I did B-Farm, my graduation, and then I'm pursuing hospital management in IHMR, Jaipur. Is it correlated? Yes. Uh, in help in my career? Yes, uh, Yash. It's a definitely related to career, being from a B-Farm field and currently pursuing. Uh, this would help you in building a career substantially into the uh, analytics domain. And Dinesh is your you know, former sort of, uh, he's alumni, so perhaps he can answer it better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, your seniors can speak more about this, how they have been placed in the last three, four years in this industry. Uh, but initially they had some gaps uh, in the, because the, nothing is, uh, this is being not taught in the college. So there is a gap, there is a model in the college around this, but still you have a great career and your seniors can tell you better about that. How are they in the companies? I, and I think uh, Dr. Saurabh has also joined here. So, Dr. Saurabh, are you there? I'm there, sir. Uh, so, Dr. Saurabh is an assistant dean from the IHMR, and I've been helping him. And uh, we have been doing some classes, the workshop kind of things on analytics. So, he can put a couple of lines and support you how these programs can be helpful in making career in the consulting side. Yes, Dr. Saurabh. Yeah. Right. There is no doubt, you know, there is no doubt that the consulting sector is the, you know, the brightest sector. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm grateful to you for your, you know, insight and your guidance for our students also. So we have mm -hmm. been, you know, uh, sir, in uh, taking, you know, this course of elective course in prospects in uh, consulting uh, sector. And uh, Dr. Dinesh uh, comes out to IHMR and we have been discussing. So we have been... Uh, under you know Dinesh sir's guidance, he has guided many of the students, and now the you know the students are finding it very you know lucrative, and the consulting sector is one of the best sectors. What a uh, you know uh, postgraduate student can think. Right. Right. So you know sir, of course there is no doubt in this thing, and the, the my only suggestion to the stu people who are listening that you know prepare yourself for this you know bright opportunity and. Um, right. Thanks, many thanks to my uh, to Dineji for his uh, you know guidance, and we look forward to your guidance, sir. Thank you, Doctor Sarab. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, how much is the duration we have answered? This is a uh, six months weekend program. There's a another uh, call uh, message from Pavan Kumar Chaudhary. Pavan is asking about the pharmacovigilance program. Yes, Pavan, we have fairly robust pharmacovigilance programs, and my team will get in touch with you separately uh, later in the day or maybe tomorrow sometime. Yes, we do. So uh, Vinayak or Rajat could note down the name Pavan Kumar Chaudhary. Uh, we have Shreshtha. C is language being uh, taught you by the in data C language. Uh, uh, day to day, you would not require in business analytics, uh, Shreshta. Uh, your 80% things will happen in Excel, advanced Excel, and uh, then uh, you have the other. So, uh, Dinesh, would you like to say something? Yeah, because yeah. So, uh, no. See, oh. language role yeah. is very less. Yeah, currently as an analyst, senior analyst, uh, we don't need any requirement in terms of uh, languages like C, Python. Yeah, you if you know it's better, but uh, uh, for uh, two, three years when we start, it's all on PowerPoint and Excel. That is your bread and butter. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. do analysis on Excel and advanced Excel and present on the PowerPoint and yeah. present to the state. I would also, yeah. I would also uh, like to add. So, so when it comes to data science and uh, C as a language, you know, which is more of a programming language. So data science, although it's evolving and evolving at a very fast pace, but it's still very niche. And its application right. in the industry is also very limited because in yeah. pharma industry, the data sets are not as huge as what you have in uh, retail industry or consumer right. products, right. Uh, you know? Sure. So it varies. And in uh, pharma industry, there are already companies like IQVIA who are doing a lot of cleaning of data and then filtering and then you know selling it through their databases mm. 
so here you know application of uh, data science is very limited so it's right. better to be equipped with uh, you know what 90% of the companies are doing than to target what 5% of the companies are doing very, very, if you really very, want to uh, upskill yourself in terms of uh, you know further differentiating yourself then you can go for visualization tools uh, which are a part of this program for example tableau or uh, you know uh, uh, there is a uh, tool from uh, uh, google which is power bi yeah. so yeah. these are tools that can be used for visualization but all in all excel is quite handy and that's yeah. something which we use even till today and i have not used any data science or ai ml in my projects me also sunil in the last 14 years i have been working on excel advanced excel and powerpoint that is our medium to convey the insights to the people yeah 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 the, one of the reasons i will tell what sunil and uh, dinesh has just uh, said because you're not here dealing with the big data science you're not dealing here with the let's say uh, millions of data of us patients or the insurance data uh, you are dealing with the data which in terms of the volume of data is lesser so so at excel advanced excel will you will probably do most of your work uh, for the next even a uh, 3 4 5 years but yes as a part of the program you will learn all these skill python and all these things you will uh, learn i mean that's what we have designed so that tomorrow an employer ask you whether you have that skill set yes we will be giving you all that skill set and i have another so question you know, from yes nail sir I, yeah go ahead just right it's very important to understand the functional side and business side of any data right so that's what this course is going to tell you right thanks deepak is asking about the placement support yes deepak we have excellent sort of a placement system well established placement system in in uh, you know since 2004 we have a proper placement department which works very closely with all the pharmaceutical companies research companies and the analytics companies Uh, across India, uh, the salary levels in terms of the job placements uh, vary, starting anywhere between three and a half lakh to four and a half lakhs is the starting salary in most of sort of a, this uh, particular domain. Uh, so, so yeah, another question. Yeah, Dinesh sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, but now it's uh, moving ahead. Uh, so if you come with uh, this uh, uh, basic information, and if we feel that. Uh, you know about this competitive intelligence forecasting little bit. Uh, the initial salary now, the, what is being offered in to the colleges, and uh, now we have started it around six and six point five lakhs. So uh, it's a good uh, good amount of money. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, that's okay. it. So I always, you know, take a conservative approach because there are companies right. who may offer, you know, three and a half to four lakhs yeah. starting, which we are seeing right, right. now. Uh, a lot of recruiters, the freshers especially, if you have one or two years experience. even if in the any domain in pharma industry your salary goes up uh, starting anywhere i mean 3 and a half 4 lakhs is the starting salary and, uh, and one more important point i like uh, this industry is not tenure based industry that after one year you will be promoted after two years your salary will be increased no this is a performance based industry you join as analyst you prove within 6 months you will be promoted maybe to third level and your salary will be doubled this is a non, not a tenure based industry yeah this is a knowledge based industry the more you come with the knowledge and the skills the more we pay right uh, i have another question from uttej uttej yes do we do have lot of good clinical research and pharmacovigilance courses my team will get in touch with you anirudh singh uh, this is question for you dinesh and sunil uh, which business analysis techniques are used by the analysts so again i am saying uh, there, there is no s- such specific techniques like the competitive intelligence have te- techniques as sunil said after gathering the data you will use different tools and techniques like five quarters model hands of matrix bcg matrix these tools and techniques are being used once you gather the data what type of data you gather what type of analysis is being to done uh, it depends on that so all the tools and techniques one where to get the data will be taught in a different Uh, modules like once competitive intelligence comes what tools and techniques is going to that we will teach you forecasting time series modeling the sas thing we will teach you in every module there is a tools and techniques which will be covered uh, in modules yeah 
Yeah. Another yeah. question I have from Pushpak is advanced Excel prerequisite for this course. Uh, Pushpak, no, we will be teaching you the Excel and ad advanced Excel as a part of the program. Right. Anirudh Singh Solanki, what is the different? Uh, what is the difference between risk and issue, Dinesh? Um, a risk and issue. Uh, I'm not getting this question. Uh, I don't know. I could not understand. Anirudh, can you sort of uh, elaborate your question in what context? Or you, or can, uh, you can speak if you like to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Anirudh, you can speak. I think he's not there. So if you want to, you can write a mail uh, to Kamal sure. about this yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, then we have Sriram. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, having a background from physiotherapy, currently pursuing MBA and hospital management, I want to know what are the possible fields or application of this course apart from the pharmaceutical industry? So medical devices is one, clinical research, domain, and so anything related with life sciences, basically. Yeah, hospital consulting. As you are a yeah. yeah, so Anirudh is asking the strategic risks. What are the strategic so, risks? So are you asking a strategic risk as a question that what is strategic risk or are you asking? So he is saying actually system risk, process risks. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, mean, okay, I cannot so, get it. Uh, Sunil, if you can answer. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just try. <laughs> okay, so um, right, right. when it comes to strategic decision making, so I hope you are, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, what are the strategic risks that can be evaluated by the businesses or the companies that are operating in their areas. So there are various tools, techniques that we can use to identify those risks. For example, Quotas for five, Quotas five process is a tool used to identify the uh, entry barriers in a market, which is in a way is a strategic risk for a company. Similarly, when you are entering a product category, uh, whether you want to do, uh, you know, market size versus uh, industry growth rate, which is mapped in a BCG matrix. So that can help you see, you know, whether, you know, whether the portfolio that you are trying to enter or whether the portfolio you have as a company, how much of, the, uh, what is the risk in that portfolio? Then there is similarly internal factor evaluation, external factor evaluation, where, where you analyze strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So these are all, you know, Things that help you identify the strategic risks, risks for businesses yeah, aligned right. industry. So we we have few more questions from Deepak. Deepak, we will get in touch with you separately. Uh, related with the competitor analysis, yes, we will speak to you. Uh, Akanksha, we could not get your question. Maybe we missed out. Would you like to repeat your question, Akanksha Singh? Okay. All right. So here is your question. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, Dinesh uh, Akanksha's question is, uh, as you mentioned about the capstone projects and about the live projects that will be getting hands on training on these along with the course. Would you please elaborate this how we will be getting and it will be those which related to which related to any organization? Dinesh? Uh, so yeah, so we'll not be disclosing the names I said. Uh, once you move ahead and with the more okay. conversation we make, but we will we have uh, a collaboration with different companies, um, Gurgaon based, uh, Pune based. Uh, so uh, we will be uh, giving you projects from there. Uh, those companies, uh, the live projects, the tasks is all uh, so that you are well versed with the ongoing projects. So, but right now we cannot disclose the names. And, and also, Akanksha, we have a lot of you know the team is substantial experience in these business analytics so we will be creating the projects for you real-time projects yeah, for you to practice. we have yeah, a lot of projects create, yeah yep yeah. so we don't have any more questions if you want to ask any other question we'll be happy to answer Excuse me, sir. Okay. My okay. question is, what are the salary prospects? 
Right, Akanksha so, yeah. is, I say, salaries start anywhere between three and a half, four lakhs. Some companies pay even higher at the starting at about five as well. However, as the nature said, then it's not like a typical uh, sector where you are analyzed every three years for the next level. If your performance as a you know, as a consultant or as a analyst is good, you will continue to sort of a, you may get even uh, higher sort of a, a salary jump in the year one itself. But the typical salaries uh, uh, increase in this sector is close to about 20%, which is least slightly right. higher than a typical pharma. Right. And to, yeah, to answer this question, uh, the salary band like five, six lakhs, uh, it has been uh, less maybe to the college because uh, there is a huge gap uh, the student which brings because uh, they don't come with these concepts, these analytics te techniques, these courses. That's why we do. But if someone comes, we also do. But if someone comes with these techniques and we find that he knows that we just increase the salary in a month. And uh, after doing these types of courses, definitely people will be coming with the basics of this information. Uh, so definitely uh, it can be more and it can be re uh, raised anytime. So just go through these courses, learn things and just don't bother about CTC and salaries. Uh, yeah. Your performance will be for that. Yeah. Yeah, sir. CTC and this industry takes care. Yeah, yeah. So first, equip yourselves. Uh, be you know someone who can be hired by the companies be hireable and salary right. is yeah, something that should worry as the last right right okay thank you very much everyone and uh, thank you uh, we will be uh, working out on how we can give access to this session uh, and yeah, so we will inform you closing, yeah my last closing point will be uh, don't think this course as a, another course uh, which is uh, whooping everywhere analytics data science and uh, this is a course uh, de uh, developed for pharmaceutical and healthcare industry completely into this which will, which will enable you to be the part of the industry it is an enabler enabler program other than uh, fixing you somewhere so this will enable that's all from my side Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, uh, Vinesha. Thank you, Sunil, for the very inspiring session. And uh, we you. are looking forward, perhaps, another session before the batch launch so that students, if they still have any sort of uh, queries, will be very, right. very happy to answer that. And, and it will be very good if you can, you people can contact Kamal as early as possible because uh, this lockdown is there. I think it will be another month. So uh, we all, can gather and do this program and move fast because right now I have time, Kamal has time, Sunil have time. So we can really contribute to each other. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you. Thank you, Kamal. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.